Let's talk about these Dallas Cowboys, man, travel to Cleveland to take on them Browns one time. All right, we're going to start this one off, man. Um, definitely a big scare in this game for the Dallas Cowboys with Jake Ferguson, who looked like he had an ACL tear. It's just an MCL. He's going to be out just a couple of weeks. The Cowboys end up winning this game 33-17. to Cowboys got out to an extremely early lead in this one. Without their offense really having to do much, their defense was definitely playing stout, not only through the first half, but through the second half as well. Cowboys were up at the half 20-3. to Man. The Cowboys might have the best punt returner in the game right now. Kevontae yeah, Turpin, penalties getting called back for him, making great plays and whatnot, but he did have the one that he took to the uh, house in the third quarter to put the score uh, for the Dallas Cowboys' favor, 27-3. to And the Cowboys' defense, man, like I got so many notes on this Cowboys' defense. They were, you know, a lot of people were thinking, man, they're missing, you know, uh, Deron Bland. Things might not look as good on the back end of this defense, but, man, did their front play great. Their linebackers played incredible in this one. Uh, Demarion Overshone, uh, he was their 2023 uh, third-round pick out of Texas. And this dude wasn't on my radar because he tore his ACL in the preseason game last year in his rookie year. He led the Cowboys, man, 11 tackles, two quarterback hits, one sack, one tackle for loss. And the linebacker I was talking about from the Minnesota Vikings was Eric Kendricks. He had nine tackles, two quarterback hits, two sacks, one TFL, and an interception in this game. You obviously know what you're going to get out of Demarcus Lawrence and Michael Parsons. Lawrence had five tackles, four quarterback hits, two sacks, three TFLs. Michael Parsons, four <laughs> tackles, five quarterback hits, one sack, one TFL. Trayvon Diggs, four tackles and an interception. So, Hard to not win a game when your defense goes out there and puts up those kind of numbers. The Browns couldn't run the ball in this one, really couldn't commit to it either because they got down on the scoreboard too early. 12 rushes for uh, Jerome Forty at just 44 yards, and he had that late touchdown that was like with two minutes left in the game. I think the Browns are really missing Nick Chubb. Um, and not only Nick Chubb, their offensive line. They were you know, banged up a little bit. Offensive line banged up, but this this is what I've noticed. If you just listen to the the talks in the community about offensive line, everyone brings up the Cleveland Browns as if they have one of the best offensive lines in the league, along with the Detroit Lions, along with the Dallas Cowboys being another team, and the Philadelphia Eagles as well. Their offensive line, with the final 2023 rankings, they were ranked 22nd. And it looks like it. If you just look at the way that Deshaun Watson played ball last year in the six games that he played in, he had a 5-1 and one record, which is ridiculous because he's not playing good ball. But you see a quarterback that is being chased around the field and trying to make plays but taking unnecessary sacks. Deshaun Watson looks like a guy that's trying to do way too much. And, you know, in return, he's definitely taking a lot of punishment. Um, as far as Deshaun Watson goes, he had the interception in this game. I thought both interceptions were not really his fault. He had the tipped interception uh, from Michael Parsons that got tipped up in the air, got picked off. That was interception number one. Definitely took a lot of unnecessary sacks. He, he can't escape the pressure like he used to and I don't know if that has to do with the offensive line because when he played for the Houston Texans in 2020, their offensive line wasn't great either. And he put up 33 touchdowns, seven interceptions, and almost 5,000 yards. Now, he was 7 of 17 for 36 yards and one interception in the first half. Oh, and I'm looking up like, what a poor <laughs> performance, man. Like, But the dude is literally running for his life. Yeah. And I think, you know, he understands what's at stake here for not only his team, but for him and his future livelihood in the NFL as a quarterback, because he got the biggest deal we've ever seen from a quarterback at the time. I think Dak Prescott now has breached a bigger, bigger contract than uh, Deshaun Watson as far as AAV goes. But he, he got this huge contract with all these guarantees, and now he just looks like a guy that's not living up to it. There was 12-19 left in the third quarter, and his longest throw happened to that point in the game. It was 11 yards. 9.45 left in the third quarter. The Browns had their first red zone trip of the game. They ran fade on first and second down. One to the left side, one to the right side. And I'm just like, where is the creativity? I know a lot of fans on Twitter say that bullshit, right? But, like, we're talking about Kevin Stefanski here, who is known for, like, creating, you know, uh, different type of concepts from an off offensive standpoint that actually work. And there, there are mixed opinions about Kevin Stefanski. I see a lot of people that really don't like his style. My cousin, who played ball in the league for a little bit, was in the CFL as well. He really likes Kevin Stefanski as a play caller and whatnot, but it just didn't really pan out in this game. But Amari Cooper did end up getting his second catch of the game, and it was a touchdown. Um, 
And then Jer well, actually, it got him down close to the red zone. And then Jerry Judy ended up getting the touchdown when they got a little bit closer. They cut the score to 27 to 10 at that point. What I see from Deshaun Watson is a guy that can still throw the football. I, I don't see a problem like what I see with Daniel Jones, where it's like, damn, dude is just completely inaccurate, lost his velocity, lost his touch, is scared in the pocket, can't take the deep shots down the field. He's trying to make the throws. He was sacked six times in this game, ended the day. It's crazy because just think about it. In the third quarter, when you start the third quarter, he was 7 of 17 for 36 yards. When he ended the game, they threw the ball 45 times. He was 24 of 45 for 169. One touchdown, two interceptions. This was the number for me that just had me like, well, what the fuck are the Cleveland Browns doing? 3.8 yards per attempt. <laughs> You might as well just be handing off the damn ball at that point. His QBR, bro, and this is why when you were talking about the next-gen stat stuff, I was like, man, I got to dig into this QBR shit because his QBR was 9.3. <laughs> it was Yo, a tough day. It was a tough day in the office. It was a tough day When you were reading the off the individual stat lines for the Cowboys, I'm like, damn, each one of them had a better defensive statistic line than most teams in the league on yes, Sunday. Bro. Yes, bro. And, you know, you, those numbers on the defense really show why he really struggled in this game. Now, time to throw for Deshaun Watson in this game. Under pressure, he's creating a lot of time. 4.12 seconds to throw the ball when he's under pressure. With a clean pocket, 2.3 seconds, which would have you, you're get, that's as fast as you can get rid of the ball in the NFL. So, to me, it's not a thing of like, hey, he's not seeing the reads and he's not making the throws. It's the pressure that is being applied, at least in this game. We could look back at last season and dig into numbers that probably show that Deshaun Watson has not been that great of a quarterback. I think it was seven touchdowns, six interceptions, and just like around 1,000 yards in the six games that he played in. But he had just one turnover-worthy play in the entire game. See, I am, I am so puzzled right now. Because <laughs> right <then. laughs> you're – like, I – I it's not like – I didn't watch every single play live, right? But I watched a lot, of, a, a good portion of the game, and it's not like I didn't see the bad play, right? But I didn't yep. see the good play. And then I'm looking at the stat line, and I'm like, God, that's pretty bad. And then, like, I listen to, to some of the, the points that you're making, and I'm like, now I'm confused. Man, because the stat line was horrible. It was horrible. It's... And I didn't watch the game live. I they were I think that the Cowboys played either at four or they were playing during the Giants they, game. They played at four. So like I had it I had the commanders on the big screen and then I had uh red zone and cowboys on and the I other had to screens. go back and watch both those games because I I watched the second half live, but I had to go to Bleacher Report right after yeah. the Giants game to do the recap. So I couldn't watch during that first quarter. I did like an hour and a half stream. And I was like, I'm really curious as to what is wrong with Deshaun Watson because you, you don't go from being like, like, just think about any other quarterback that was good, right? That age great. Did, great. Yeah, let's go with great, right? Dude was great. That you're that great, and age isn't the reason why you decline, nor injury. He did, Is he there had any a quarterback that, that has injuries. happened to? Because he had an injury. He had an injury. He had the shoulder injury. The last year in t in, in Houston before the he, they no here him. here is when he had the um the, the shoulder, shoulder injury. injury yeah but he also yeah. had an injury I think the last year not 2020 that man he that's when he put up 5,000 yards but the year the, I thought he was hurt the year the end of the season of that season going into the next year when he was suspended or he wasn't suspended but he was on the sideline I didn't play him during the investigation I think he might have had an injury I have to go back and look up look maybe into during that. the year where he sat he he might have had an injury but I think he played 16 games in 2020 I'm but no sure. injury that should have a, 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 a impact on it, the, it's the not decline like Peyton Manning with the neck injury, exactly right he's a young dude and when you see him moving around he doesn't look like the injuries phasing him. He, he had a couple of deep shots in this game to Amari Cooper where he kind of overthrew him a little bit. There was one late in the game where I was like, bro, you got to make that catch. Like, this dude is making the throws. Like, from an arm talent point or perspective, I, I don't see the, the fall off. It's just it ain't working for this dude. And I do not understand it. Now, to me, the play that really summed up Deshaun Watson in this game, like, and really sums up his time with the Cleveland Browns to me, there was 338 left in the game. They're down 33 to 10. It's second and eight. When I tell you he got pressure up the middle from that Cowboys defense, bro, 
I'm talking like there was no one in front. It was like there was, you know how like when when the team come out the tunnel and they got the paper that be like Cowboys and they come through that shit like, right? That's how they came through that line. He had, it looked like an all out blitz cover zero. He had Amari Cooper on the right side. I can't remember if he was in the slot running a fade or if he was on the outside running a go route. But the pressure is like, in his lap. I, I commend all of y'all and challenge y'all to go look at this play with 338 left in the game. Bro, he's horizontal when he's making the throw. He's lit, like, the pressure came from the interior defensive lineman. It was like a, somebody with a number 90-something, 90 98 or something. Deshaun Watson is literally being wrapped up, bro, and he still managed to throw the ball like 45 yards down the field. It was literally just like the play we saw when, when Daniel Jones tried to throw it to Darius Slayton in the Washington game and it went off his fingertips. Literally just like that. They ended up scoring on that drive uh, with, a, with an Amari Cooper touchdown, I believe, right at the end of the game. Oh, no, it was a, um, that Jerome was the touchdown Ford from Jerome Ford late. Yeah, they got that, down to the goal that line. That gave me the touchdown I needed from my parlay. Dude, like, to me, it was the play that sums it up. A guy that, you know, they, the NFL community thinks he has enough around him. I, I told you the numbers with the offensive line. Ranked 22nd c coming out of last year. And in this game, they look terrible. You, you, you heard all the statistics about the Dallas Cowboys beating the shit out of Deshaun Watson in this game, I, right? Uh, six sacks, two interceptions, I think, was the end the Yeah, it was two picks, six sacks. And then think about all those. If I add up all those pressures from the Dallas Cowboys in this one, you're talking about, I, I can do it real quick here, 13 quarterback hits, you had the six sacks, you had six TFLs, and you had, just from their front, you had 18... No, you had 29 tackles from their front. From their front and their linebackers, you had 28 tackles. So it goes to show you that that Dallas Cowboys defense, I, maybe we're like jumping the gun here, maybe I'm jumping the gun here. That Dallas Cowboys defense looked much better than I thought they were going to look. We knew they had a good defense last year, but they lost Dan Quinn. Um, who's the homie from Minnesota, Minnesota? Mike Zimmer? Zimmer, yeah. Th that defense might be better under Mike Zimmer than they were under Dan Quinn. You know what's now, crazy just, is a lot of people were like, they were using that in the commanders uh, um, fan base. They were like, "How does how does our defense look look worse, and the Cowboys' defense looks better than last year? What's personnel, going on here?" Personnel, personnel, man. Yeah, I don't think y'all look worse than last year, but you just kind of ran into the bu the Bucks saw. The, you know, it was a good one there. It was a when <laughs> I get the sound effect. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those, but. When I look at Deshaun Watson, and just to sum this up before I kick it back to you, I know it was a little bit long-winded, but this, this game really, like, touched a nerve for me. The Browns need more shit over there. But what, 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 do you, what, do you want, what do you think they need more of? The running game needs to be much better. They need okay. Nick Chubb back in the lineup. That's okay. one. You can't forget that they had Kareem Hunt over there with Nick Chubb. Jerome Ford was the third running yeah, back, yeah, yeah. right? So they, they, they could rely on that in a certain way. The offensive line has to be better or you got to beef it up. And they also just brought in Kadarius Toney. To, they signed him to the practice yeah, squad. Yeah. So to me, that says that they're not happy with what they're getting out of their wide receivers. The, the one play, who's the kid? Is it Elijah Moore over Elijah there? Elijah Moore, yeah. Bro, Deshaun Watson had a play. The first interception, he's doing magic in the pocket, bro. Elijah Moore's coming across on a little crosser like you would see in mesh concept. He put the ball on him like right at the crown of the helmet. Elijah Moore just like Evan Ingram the shit tips up and that's how Trayvon Diggs got the interception. You need you just need more over there. Amari Cooper is great, but like Jerry Judy, when we looked at Jerry Judy with Cortland Sutton with the Denver Broncos, did we go, man, they got some guys over there? No. I did, but I was Jerry foolish. Judy's a guy that's been dropping the ball his entire NFL career. He was yeah. great in college at Bama, yeah. but ever since he got to the NFL, he's had problems dropping the ball. He's a talented guy. But I just don't think he's what is right for that offense. Njoku is, is good at the tight end position. And if he you look at the big play hurt, that Njoku though. had, the throw is beautiful. He, he does like a little, a bit of a Texas route from, from the tight end position. Man, he got hit in stride so perfectly, bro. It, it's like, bro, he, he could have handed the ball off to him at that point down the field. I, I still think that Deshaun Watson has what it takes to be at least a good quarterback in this league. But I think that we look at the Browns. The Browns are a very dysfunctional organization. Um, I am a big fan of their GM. Uh, I believe it's Joe Barry. He's from the D.C. area, too. And I just think that they're not, they're spending a lot of money. They're the number one as far as salary cap spending, active contracts this year. They're at the top of that shit. 
it's not working out for them. They're not going to live up to that number. That's for nope. sure. Ain't that's no way, sure. bro. Uh, big shout out to the, some of the, there's some great um, input coming in from the chat because we have a lot of Dallas Cowboys fans in the chat. Shout out to everybody. Kai, you know, brother L, Greg, we, we appreciate you guys. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm curious to see how long their starting tackles are out uh, for in Cleveland. I knew that they were banged up. I didn't realize that both of their tackles were out for this game. I'll be curious to see how long they're out for, if that's like a, mm -hmm. a, a long-term thing or if it was just for this game. Uh, Brother L also brings up a great point about the Cleveland Browns. They need real player leadership vets. Who is the voice over there? Mm. Mm. You, you, I, I do not. That's a question I feel like you could probably answer for 75 to 80% of the teams like that, right? Yep. I have no idea for Cleveland. That's a very good question. Is it a Nick Chubb? Is it a Mari Cooper? It's is it Deshaun It's not Amari Cooper. Jam you, you remember J O K maybe Dallas on defense. Cowboys fans can can attest to this. Amari Cooper seemed like a dude that don't talk. He seems like Miles Garrett. That's not a not a rah rah type of dude. I guess Miles Garrett. I mean, yeah, and it it seems like defensively that's not their issue. No, it's offensively they were bad. I mean they were. And let's listen. They were bad. Yes, Dallas has a good defense. Yes. You know, it's kind of like the flip-flop of the Commanders Tampa Bay, where Tampa Bay has a really good offense and Washington's defense was bad, right? Yeah. So, so when you are when you have that sort of uh, discrepancy in the two sides of the football, you're going to see some lopsided statistics and stuff and, and outcomes like you did in this game. I mean, Cleveland was – they were bad on third down. <laughs> two of 15 on third down. It's terrible. That That's, that's pretty bad. I, it's and we thought y'all well y'all were bad on defense on third down they yeah were bad on offense. yeah God that's what I'm saying it's almost like the flip flop exact <laughs> yeah. opposite of, of our game uh, you know like I'm confused I'd be more confused now after listening to you talk about this Sean Watson Bro, than on, I was on going that into play this. that I talked about with, with 338 left. After he threw the ball like laying he was horizontal in the air being tackled, bro. And I'm talking about it was one of those hits where like they usually like throw a flag. You know you you. You put the body on top and you put the weight on top mm -hmm. of the quarterback. Bro, it was like, you remember when when we used to grip tape skateboards and you get the piece of grip tape and you got to take the, the the regular paper uh, off the grip tape? Yeah. Like a, yeah. that's how he peeled his body off the ground, bro. And I see that, um, who was it that said it? Uh, OG Knockout said his body language says he's not confident. I think that's that has a lot to do with it. Because when he's playing off instinct and just moving in the pocket, he's still got it. He still can move around. He can buy time. He can extend plays. He can do all that stuff. Like I told you, the time to throw went under pressure jumped up almost double. He was at 4.12, right? It's just that who who's going to make a play for the Cleveland Browns? And that question that you just asked, too, like, who's in the huddle? Like, yo, let's go get this shit. Where's the Jarvis Landry? Who, by the way, Jarvis Landry's working out with the route guy right now. Man, his routes look. Jarvis Landry should be on a football I loved team right him, now. Man. Always big Landry guy. Listen, yeah, Cowboys got pieces. I feel <laughs> he immediately was watching. I think it was the title reaction. I immediately said, uh, when you started telling everybody what my picks were for the NFC East, mm -hmm. I immediately regretted picking the Dallas Cowboys to finish third in the NFC East. Oh, yeah. You was bugging <laughs> on that one. You was bugging on that I, one. <laughs> now, listen, that defense is good. It's it's it's. It's top top five defenses probably in the NFL. I mean, obviously, and I like Brother L too because Brother L, as a Giants fan, he said it's week one. It's or week Cowboys one. Fan. It's mm -hmm. week one, right? Okay, so I understand that. And shout out to Brother L for bringing that as a Cowboys fan for understanding that. Offensively, you know, we talked about this a little bit on the preview show for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. <laughs> He said, like, don't make that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a little sketchy here uh in the um in, in the Giants. I mean no uh, Giants, the Cowboys <laughs> offense. You guys are messing me up now. On the Cowboys <laughs> offense. You know, Dak was okay. He yep. wasn't I don't know if he was two hundred and thirty two million dollar guaranteed good. You know, but he had some, there was some inconsistencies in the Dallas Cowboys offense. Dak was 19 of 32 for 179 yards. There's a lot of, a lot of balls being thrown around in this game and not a lot of completion. Especially for having the lead. It, that's interesting that he threw the ball that much. So one of the things that I was, I, I talked about, I was looking for in the Dallas Cowboys offense was going to be to see the running back split. Um, I have 
Say, I mean, I have Saquon. I have Zeke down. Giants, boy. Yeah, I know, right? I have Zeke <laughs> down for 10, 10 carries and uh, Rico down for eight. Okay. So almost a 50 50 split, but only 18 carries for a game that felt like it was, it was you know, pretty over at, for a certain point. And then I started looking at the score. I said, how the hell did the Cowboys score so many damn points? They scored 33 points. Yep. Dak threw one touchdown. Zeke ran for one touchdown. They had a defensive touchdown. Mm-hmm. And then four Kevontae field Turpin. goals. Kevontae Turpin, too, on the, um, on the return. Yeah, that's a defensive touchdown, I think. That one, oh, is that defensive? Yeah, that's defensive special, special teams. teams touchdown, man. But yeah, you know, they're lumped together. DST, yeah, I don't baby. Like that. It's the three, three phases of NFL football. Good point. I like that. <laughs> Good point. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. But, you know, and I thought uh, one of my other questions was, is Brandon Cook's going to, you know, he's 30 years old. How much of an impact is yep. he going to have? He had the I touchdown. I think he had four catches for 40 yards, if I'm not mistaken, for a touchdown. Um, but that's that's 101 yards between Lamb and, and Cook's. I, I just... I'm a little concerned. I feel like I thought that the Browns' defense was better than they performed in this game. Even yeah. though they did play well, their offense didn't help them very much. It, when you say concerned, are, are you talking about the Cowboys' offense? I am. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the Cowboys' offense. Because you know what I would, um, I, would, I would suggest, right, or I would try to give some influence to pump the brakes on it simply because of this. Think about how many games the Philadelphia Eagles were in that were very similar to this, mm-hmm. where their defense would dominate, especially early on last season. And Jalen Hurts have a pedestrian box score, yeah, yeah. 130, maybe a touchdown on the ground with 50 yards on the ground and, you know, not really that great statistics, around 50 to 55, 60% maximum completion percentage. So keep that so in maybe mind. Not- I, I wanted to look up how many plays they ran, too. Like, how, many t- how much more plays did the Browns have than the Cowboys? The, well, the Cowboys probably have more plays than the Browns, right? I don't know. I'm about to look it up right now. So, um, so let me clarify that. Maybe not concerned like it's going. They're not going to make the playoffs concerned, but like what happens if they play like a really good team concerned? Like, can I mean, they? You, you you know what the Cowboys going to do against really good teams? They're going to fold. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's how they that's, do. I, and I I tried to like you know vouch for them a little bit last year. I thought they had a really good roster, but they get to the playoffs, bro, and they just lawn chair, bro. Just <laughs> that's chair. what they do. <laughs> My, yo, my brother, before the last playoff game, my brother's a Cowboys fan, for those of y'all that don't know. He's like, man, I'm not getting invested in this shit. I was like, man, I, I really think y'all got a chance this year, bro. It's been three straight years, 12 wins, man. This team is really good. He's like, man, just text me when it's over. I was <laughs> like, all right, Packers dog walked them. <laughs> I, I know Cowboys fans is tired of this shit. I know they are, bro. Every regular season, you hooping, get to the playoffs and run into that San Francisco 49ers buzzsaw. And last year just so happened to be you couldn't even get to the 49ers bus saw. It's good. How many plays? I need to know this. How many plays? I know, right? <laughs> All right, let's see. So it was uh, each team had 15 first downs. Total plays, 60. The Browns had 70. They were 414 on third down. It was a bad third down game. So that, that yeah. kind of explains a lot of it, too. You're just not converting and sustaining drives as well. So they, so they ran the ball 28 times, basically? They had 60 plays and Dak threw it 32 times. And they ran it 20, 25 rushing attempts. They were averaging 4.4 yards per play. The, the, yeah, I have that down. 3.3. Yeah. God damn. (laughs) It was, it was, and Dallas again with the penalties. Nuts. With the penalties, Dallas. 11 penalties for 88 yards, bro. Yeah. Both teams had 11 penalties. And time of possession was damn near dead split. The Browns had the ball for just a minute, a minute more, barely a minute more. So special teams really is a big point. Big, uh, big shout out to Dallas Cowboys special teams. Touch they, the special teams scored more points than the offense did in this game. Yeah, and homie made a homie made a um. What, what's my what's the kicker's name? Is it Brandon? Aubrey Brandon from McMahon? University Brandon of Notre Aubrey. Dame. I was going to say Brandon McManus. <laughs> He made a 66 yarder in this game, but they called a flag and it, it yeah. didn't count. I was like, man, this boy got a boot. Oh, yeah, he's he's legit. So like yeah. between him. So he had we went four for four. That's 12 points and an extra point. That's 13 points and the turp in 19. So I had 19 of the 33 points came from special teams and defense. 
Yeah, that's that's a good vibe. You you see Kai in the building. He said, "Man, authentic. Come on, bro. It's different this year. Summer's putting belt to ass on his defense." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Belt we all say that. We all say that then. going into the season. It's just, <laughs> no, it's different this year. I swear. Yup, we all say that. Turpitude says Stephen White. Yeah, man, dude, Cavante Turpin, man, that he's a player I want on my team, bro. Like the Giants can't find somebody to return punts for shit, especially with uh, Gunnar Olszewski dealing with the injury. They tried to have Darius Slayton back there. He he muffed one. And then he was just like, you know what? I'm just not going to catch these. Hey. I'm just going I'm to fake the fair catch and just let it hit the ground type shit. You guys That's got a fullback, do. though. Bro, the fullback, we've been, we've signed <laughs> and cut him like four times already. <laughs> Yo, the Giants, man. Joe Shane, hey, get your shit together, Joe Shane. Get your shit together. It's week one. I'm already feeling like, bro. That's, listen, Stephen White, I'm, I'm, to, 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 I, I'm talking a lot of cherries today. We're going to put this cherry on top of this one, right? Yeah. That's the Dallas Cowboy thing. I think, you know what? That's the top of the NFC East thing. Can the Eagles and Cowboys find a way to consistently win in all three phases of the game? Because there are a, more times than not, one of the three phases is letting down those two teams. With us, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, you get one phase works, maybe, if you're lucky for the Cowboys and, I mean, for the Giants and the Commanders. Facts. You know, so that's going to be interesting. I think that that's the consistent level of play from all three phases from the Cowboys and the Eagles is going to tell you a lot of who wins this division. Yeah, I still got my money on the on the Philadelphia Eagles, but Me the too. Dallas Cowboys, they they really made a, you know, they they took a couple of steps up where I'm yeah, like, got to watch out for them again. And it, it came down to the wire last year between those two.